Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is a book summary of Man's Search for Meaning, by Viktor Frankl. Doing what makes us happy is something we're told a lot. At our happiest, however, we may still struggle to get up in the morning. So, what drives us, and how do we find that magic spark that keeps us going? As a world-renowned psychiatrist Viktor Frankl's experiences in Nazi concentration camps are recounted, so is his development of the logotherapy therapeutic approach. Even in our darkest moments, we are shown that meaning is the most powerful motivator and can save us from despair even if we have lost all hope. Logo is the Greek word for meaning, so, logotherapy asserts that our primary quest is to find and live a purposeful life. Our purpose evolves and changes throughout our lives as we grow and mature, and so does the practice of logotherapy. Meaning can give us the will to overcome even the most difficult of circumstances. We've been conditioned to believe that the pursuit of personal fulfillment and material wealth should be our number one priority. While this may be true, are these really the things that bring you joy in your life? However, according to Frankl, everyone's search for meaning is a universal life force. You may have heard of Viktor Frankl's theory, but his lesser known backstory is just as fascinating as his theory. As a young psychiatrist in Vienna during the height of Jewish persecution, Viktor Frankl's story is one that deserves to be told. Frankl had the chance to flee and start a new life in the United States during this time of upheaval. His dilemma was compounded by the fact that he had to make a terrible decision. In the end, Frankl had to decide whether he wanted to pursue his career or start a new life with his wife and unborn child in safety. Alternatively, he could risk abandoning his parents in an increasingly hostile environment and upholding his responsibilities as a son by remaining. The decision to stay was based on a key conversation he had with his father. When Frankel's father showed him a burned-out church relic that he had collected, the young man was overcome with emotion. Honor your father and mother, so that your days may be long upon the land, was engraved on the relic, and it was at that point that Frankel decided to stay. The war intensified. Frankel and his family were incarcerated in separate concentration camps after they were separated. In the end, only Viktor Frankl was able to escape these concentration camps alive. As a result of this, Frankl provided the world with an invaluable insight into human suffering. Not only how to endure but also how to transcend it. This summary briefly explains Frankl's fundamental question, which centers around how anyone could survive the psychological devastation of the concentration camps. And the simplicity of his focus makes it profound. No matter how terrible things may seem, we must never forget that we are only as weak as our weakest link. We have a remarkable capacity for coping with adversity. What, then, motivates us in the face of seemingly insurmountable adversity, trauma, and grief? The desire to continue onward and upward. According to Frankel, the most resilient inmates were those who had developed their own methods of coping with their circumstances. Most of these mechanisms relied on their own internal power. As a result, they were able to hold on to their hopes and dreams, believing that their suffering had a purpose. Reminiscing was a common method of coping for these prisoners. Moreover, they'd imagine conversing with the people they care about most, such as loved ones. The camp guards could not take away this simple practice from them. Other inmates found solace in nature, while others relied on stories to escape the harsh reality of their situation. Just hearing the birds chirping or a glimpse of a sunset could bring them a fleeting moment of joy. Some people found solace in music or in the company of others, while others turned to humor and connection for solace. When it comes to self-preservation, Frankl says that humor is another of the soul's weapons in the fight for self-preservation. Prisoners who might be on the verge of starvation would sometimes give their last piece of bread to someone in greater need. Despite their unimaginably difficult conditions, these prisoners tried to live in accordance with their values as far as they could. They had a steely inner resolve that no one could shake. This concept is critical. The last of human freedoms, according to Frankel, is a sense of self-determination. One of the most meaningful aspects of our lives is our ability to choose how we respond to the situations in which we find ourselves. While in prison, Frankel was reminded of the importance of the search for meaning, which had already been one of his most important concepts. Suffering is meaningless, we give our suffering meaning by the way in which we respond to it, he writes. The pursuit of pleasure isn't the primary goal of life, as Sigmund Freud held. It is not a search for power, as Alfred Adler claimed, as some have claimed. A person's search for meaning is the sole purpose of life, according to Viktor Frankl. We thrive when our work is in harmony with our core beliefs. Success and contentment are ephemeral and subject to the whims of others. The lack of direction or directionlessness in our lives often leaves us feeling profoundly empty. 
The term existential void refers to this feeling of emptiness. It is our capacity to seek and cultivate meaning that defines us as human beings. When people don't feel like they have a greater purpose, they may experience feelings of emptiness. There is a lot of evidence to back this up, including a study from Johns Hopkins University in which students were asked what was most important to them. Most of the respondents, 78%, said that finding meaning in their lives was important to them. So, if the point of living is to discover meaning, there are three ways to do so, pursue a life task, love selflessly, and suffer bravely. Each of these approaches has its pros and cons. Viktor Frankl's initial manuscript on logotherapy was confiscated by the Nazis when he entered the concentration camps. It was only after the initial shock and grief had passed that he decided that he would leave the camp and rewrite his manuscript one day. Survival and completion of his work became the focus of his life. The most likely survivors, according to him, were those who were aware that they had a task to complete. Even in the act of selfless love, you can find a sense of purpose in this context, romantic love isn't the only kind that counts. You must practice compassion and do what you can to improve the lives of those around you if you want to achieve this goal. This is what it means to have a deep and meaningful relationship with the people and things around you. Self-actualization, according to Frankel, is achieved through acts of selfless love and empathy. Even in the darkest of times, we can still derive meaning from our work and relationships. Frankel was approached by an elderly man who was depressed due to the death of his wife. When a man lost his wife, he felt as though his life had lost all meaning. What would have happened if you had died first and your wife had been forced to live without you? Frankel asked the man. In response, he said that it would have been terrible, she would have suffered in the same way that he was. As a result, the man's suffering, as noted by Frankel, had a purpose. For his wife's sake, the man's agony had been a blessing in disguise. The man was able to see his pain in a new light because of this shift in perspective. He was able to overcome his depression as a result of this. Suffering ceases to be suffering, once it finds a meaning, such as the meaning of a sacrifice, Frankel explains. To sum it up, the poignant message of Viktor Frankl is tinged with a sour taste. It is possible to find meaning in any situation, even if it means going through a lot of pain. Comparisons are pointless because we are all dealing with our own unique set of problems. As a result, the search for meaning is a deeply personal one that all of us must engage in. It is through Frankel's teachings that we can all discover the meaning of our own lives and use that meaning to rise above the difficulties we face. In order for us to grow and be free, we must be able to choose how we respond to our circumstances. To find meaning, you'll have to put in a lot of effort and struggle. In order to understand meaning, it's important to remember that it's not a universal concept. Let your work, your relationships, and your reactions to life's ups and downs be a reflection of your most cherished ideals and deepest convictions. So, what are you trying to say? Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.